In the same way that artificial intelligence algorithms work in the digital world, spiritual algorithms operate in our lives. Everything you look at, listen to, and focus on is registered in your spiritual algorithm. Let me repeat that. Everything you watch, hear, give attention to, or engage with will be delivered back to you by your spiritual algorithm. The Bible says in the book of James that we are tempted by our own desires. It's not the devil placing those desires in us. Our thoughts and desires come from within. So be mindful of what you give your attention to, because it shapes not only your actions, but also the opportunities that will arise in your life. If you focus on positive, constructive, and meaningful things, you'll attract more of the same. In life, whether good or bad, what we receive is often a reflection of where we've placed our focus. It's not that someone invented a sin for you or handed you a specific temptation out of thin air. No, the spiritual world, just like an algorithm, reads what you've clicked on, what you've given attention to, and responds accordingly. For good, it's God at work. For bad, it's our adversary, the enemy. The spiritual world operates much like a digital algorithm. Many times people have come up to me saying, Tiago, your YouTube videos have blessed me so much. I love them. And when I ask how they found me, they tell me, well, I was watching someone else's content. And when that video finished, YouTube suggested one of your videos. The algorithm simply detected that the person enjoys listening to a particular type of content and it delivered one of my videos to them because it aligned with their interests. The same thing happens in both our spiritual and everyday lives. Everything you're watching, listening to, and clicking on, whether online or in the real world, affects your spiritual destiny. Opportunities begin to arise because of the attention you're giving. The spiritual algorithm responds to your focus and creates circumstances around you. But there's a powerful biblical example of this process. Let's look at the story of Jonah, found in Jonah chapter 1. This is a small yet fascinating book in the Bible that holds deep lessons about obedience and the consequences of our choices. Jonah's journey is remarkable. In one verse, he's happy with God, and in the next, he's asking to die. Sound familiar? We all have those roller coaster moments in life. Jonah was a prophet, and yet his emotions swung wildly. However, he still carried out God's commands, although not without some resistance. The first chapter of Jonah shows us a clear example of the spiritual algorithm at work. God gave Jonah a direct order. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. It was crystal clear. God had a plan for Jonah to fulfill in Nineveh. But instead, Jonah decided to flee to Tarshish, a completely different destination, as if thinking, I already know how this will end. If I go to Nineveh, they'll all repent, and God will spare them. Jonah's thoughts led him to act on his own will. So, what happened next? He found a ship headed to Tarshish. Notice that God said to go to Nineveh, but because Jonah fixated on going to Tarshish, the opportunity to flee there arose. This is a powerful example of how our thoughts shape the opportunities that appear before us. How often do we blame God for the situations we find ourselves in when, in reality, it was our own attention and choices that led us to those moments? Our minds shape our destiny. King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, affirmed this truth in Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. These are not the words of an ordinary person. They are spoken by the man who was the epitome of wisdom. What we imagine ourselves to be, we eventually become. If you think of yourself as a failure, the spiritual algorithm will deliver all the opportunities for failure to you. Everything you dream of, focus on, click on, and give attention to, becomes the fuel for the opportunities that arise in your life. Your thoughts dictate what you receive, whether for good or bad. But just as this applies to the negative, it also applies to the positive. If you start thinking about miracles, your faith can create space for opportunities of healing and success. For instance, science has already proven that people who apply faith in the face of a life-threatening diagnosis often experience a higher chance of survival. The same diagnosis might be given to two different people, and one survives while the other does not. Why? It's not just about faith that moves mountains. It's about the state of mind that faith creates within a person. They might say, 
This diagnosis is not my end. It's just a lesson I need to learn. They adopt a mindset of resilience and faith, and this mental and spiritual strength begins to open up opportunities for healing. Your mind creates the opportunities. The point here is that our minds hold immense power. The spiritual algorithm is constantly reading what we think, imagine, and focus on. If we think about positive outcomes, miracles, and healing, those opportunities will start to manifest. However, if we dwell on negativity, failure, and temptation, we will find those opportunities presenting themselves as well. Whether you are aware of it or not, your thoughts are always creating the reality around you. What you focus on, you attract, be it relationships, success, or challenges. The Bible is clear on this. We are tempted by our own desires. The spiritual algorithm delivers based on the desires and thoughts that dominate our hearts. This is why it's crucial to guard your mind and spirit carefully. Just as you wouldn't fill your social media feed with harmful content, you must be selective about what you allow into your mind and soul. Your thoughts shape your destiny. So focus on what is good, uplifting, and aligned with the path God has for you. The opportunities that arise will reflect the state of your mind. Some people, when facing even a small argument with their spouse, immediately start thinking, he's going to leave me, he's going to abandon me. With those very thoughts, they begin to open the door to opportunities for that to happen. In the spiritual world, everything you give attention to, everything you focus on, gets delivered to you, much like an algorithm. If you're constantly paying attention to negative things, like gossip about what people are saying about you or the threats of the enemy, then you are actively creating the opportunities for those negative outcomes to occur. How can you dwell on things that go against God's word, that are not in line with his promises or your divine purpose, and expect a good outcome? By doing so, you're digging the grave of your own destiny. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 4 already gave us the key to mastering our thoughts. If there's nothing good, don't think about it. To even think about something, it has to be praiseworthy, pleasant, honest, just, and true. These are the things you should be focusing on. Why? Because when you set your mind on what is true, noble, right, and pure, you create opportunities for those blessings to manifest in your life. Those who dwell on curses instead of blessings are actively creating opportunities for curses. It's not just a matter of thought. Your thoughts shape the spiritual reality around you. For example, some people say, my child is this way because my grandfather was like this. My father did the same and now my son will follow suit. No, in the name of Jesus, that generational curse is broken. Your ancestors will not dictate the future of your children. Your son will be a blessing and your husband will not remain stuck in his current situation. Your thoughts, your imagination, and your attitude toward those thoughts are what will determine your future, a future of peace and glory. The Bible says that life is meant to go from glory to glory, not regression. Like the dawn that gets brighter and brighter until it shines in its full clarity, so will your life, your family, your business, and your ministry. Jonah is a prime example of this spiritual principle. When he thought of going to Tarshish, a ship headed to Tarshish just happened to be there. Was this a coincidence? No, it wasn't. I can prove it to you through the story of Job. In Job 3.25, Job says, What I feared has come upon me, what I dreaded has happened to me. What is Job teaching us here? Stop thinking about negative things because you're drawing them into your life. Job, in the midst of his suffering, reveals why he lived in such fear. In Job chapter 1, we see that he would wake up early in the morning to sacrifice offerings for his children, saying, I will sacrifice for them just in case they have sinned. But why was he doing this? Because he was living under the fear that one day, God's hand would strike him in judgment. Job's example illustrates the power of fear and how it can shape our reality. His constant fear of punishment drew that very misfortune into his life. In the same way, many people today live under a cloud of fear fearing failure, fearing abandonment, fearing that the worst will happen. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 